fish are going to be moving in the back of creeks, the bait fish are, and hopefully that's going to be the deal today. Typical fall pattern is all the bait fish normally start to migrate towards the back of the creeks and main lake pockets. Normally that's where they should be at this time of year. Rick Myers has a plan. Being an elite bass fisherman, he depends on a plan, one that finds him fish. You ready to hear about it? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm Britt Myers, and I'm ready for my day on the lake. It's a challenge for any angler to catch fish on water they've never seen before. And when they fail, they think, well, they just weren't biting today, or maybe I'm not a good angler. How would one of those bass pros have done it? Well, what would happen if we took one of those big time pros, put him on water he's unfamiliar with, gave him a day to figure it out, just like you and I have to do. And then we follow it on Day on the Lake. Day on the Lake is brought to you by Progressive Boat Insurance. Visit Progressive.com today. And by Plano Tackle Systems. Plano, America's favorite tackle system. We're located in the central part of the country on Arkansas's DeGray Reservoir, a lake we will use quite often this season, with fishing success or failure possible in all four seasons of the year. As our angler makes his way through the day, we will keep you abreast of everything, from numbers of casts to water temperature to lure and use. Be aware that the good bass fisherman is always looking, always thinking. Here on Day on the Lake, he thinks out loud. You can tell by looking around the lake that the water's really high, it's up in the bushes. There's a lot of shoreline grass, which I, I like to fish. Um, it looks to be a clear water lake. It's fall. This time of year, if you find the bait fish somewhere around there, the largemouth or spotted bass are gonna be right there with them. Whenever I'm practicing for, for a tournament or I'm going on a new lake like we are today, I try to focus on one area. Fish are gonna be moving in the back of creeks, the bait fish are, and hopefully, that's going to be the deal today, like a typical fall pattern. I plan on pretty much going to here into this long creek. And this creek's got everything you need. You get all these little pockets and fingers and all these great points that's connected to some really deep water. We just entered in into a creek and there's a little point right here. It's got a lot of shoreline grass and this whole area has got a lot of bushes in the water, things like that. There's uh, a lot of bait, bait fish scattering in this shoreline grass, which is kind of really good. So I let it start off with this spinner bait. Just uh, mimics a little school of bait fish. It's got three blades on it. Water is extremely clear. You have to reel it fast on a day like this. You can make a cast as long as you want to and you can see the bait the whole retrieve back. You just want to get a fish to react to it really quick. You don't want to have time to look at it because if he really gets time to concentrate on it, nine times out of 10, he's not going to bite it. You're kind of fishing everything at first, just fishing the, the bushes, fishing this little, there's a little submerged bushes out here. Oh my gosh, that is a giant. That is an absolute giant. Look at this fish. <laughs> Holy cow. That is amazing right there. Holy cow. She come out of the water. That was amazing. What a bite. That scared me. <laughs> come on girl, quit pulling. Uh, look at that one. Woo, that's a pretty fish. Shave the old spinner bait first thing this morning. Look, just as I said, we come right down through there. Shady bank. Man, that's beautiful. Look at that fish. That's what it's all about right there, guys. She didn't come from the bank. She come out like underneath the boat and just grabbed it. Oh my gosh, that is a giant. That is an absolute giant. Look at this fish. Holy cow. Yeah, that's only one bite. If we get a couple more bites in his pockets, we'll run pockets for a while. A lot of guys will get out here and they'll just, they'll run a pocket and they'll know they're in pockets, but they'll still fish the main lake and work their way all the way around real slow and get back to a pocket again. And 
You want to keep your bait, you want to keep fishing productive water. That's, that's the key anywhere. Red Meyer's day isn't even an hour old yet, and he's on the board. And we have a double header going for you today. Gary Klein, one of the all-time greats in bass fishing, is putting in his day on the lake as well, and we'll check on him a little bit later. But for right now, well, how about being a part of the show by going to ESPNOutdoors.com and giving us your bass fishing opinions and check back to it for other people's opinions. How about that? Oh my gosh, that is a giant. That is an absolute giant. Look at this fish. <laughs> Holy cow. That is amazing right there. Welcome back to Day on the Lake and Bassmaster Elite Pro Britt Myers wasted very little time by hooking up with his five pound plus bass after only 45 minutes of his day. He and Gary Klein are spending a day on DeGray Reservoir the spotlight being on Brit as we watch how a really good bass fisherman finds fish and develops a pattern. Look at this uh, willow bush in the water. Anytime there's high water and there's a willow tree present, it's the best cover for these bass. You may not catch one of them now, but I promise you when the sun gets up sometime today, something will use this bush. There we go. Right in the, a willow bush. We finally got one out of a willow bush. I flipped it in there. I've been flipping right, I've been hung up a lot because it's been in there, flipping in those tight areas, but that's why I've been flipping them trees. I know they live around them. There's high water. There's a willow tree in there. There's a bass. We're about two hours in. We started fishing this uh, big creek, but we're in a big pocket right off of the creek. And we started fishing the shoreline grass, flood bushes, things like that. And we've had a couple bites. Caught one of probably close to six pounds, you know, on a spinner bait. Uh, just caught one flipping a willow bush. Those willow bushes, I think, are going to be the key as the sun gets bright and high, because that's the best cover they have that I can see on this lake. We've only caught two, but it's like a piece of a puzzle, just kind of putting things together and trying to figure it out. And so now we're going to jump, because this has some shade and sunlight. We're going to jump straight over, straight in the sunlight, and flip some trees for a few minutes. Well, sometimes in clear water, the sun will drive fish into the thick cover, but Britt flips a jig into the bushes for about 30 minutes with no takers before picking up and making a move. We'll go ahead and idle some points out here because we didn't catch that many shallow. It's, it's 11 o'clock. If we can't find any deep, we'll go back shallow, but with the water being up like that, we should have we got more in the boat than that. I've seen a lot of bait and I've seen one or two fish, but if you that may be all it's here. If you idle around enough, and you may actually right across the sweet spot. See, there's a brush pile right there. Well, it's 11.25, a few casts with a jig, and then with a light spinning outfit, Britt spends another 30 minutes drop shotting. The decision to go deep is unproductive. I mean, it's hard, but it's real exciting if you go out in the middle of a lake and you catch one of a lake you've never been to before. It's, it, it's just, you know, because going down the bank, you kind of know fish always live there, but going out in the middle of, of this big body of water like this and to catch one, it's pretty exhilarating. Well, other than that one big fish, Britt Myers is struggling right now, as is the other angler we're covering today, Gary Klein. Now, please understand that these two anglers are not competing, we're just interested in two different approaches. The whole theory behind a day for me is that, you know, when I start out in the morning, I kind of feel like I'm a generalist. I'm good at doing a lot of different techniques. But the key to success is being able at the end of the day or at the end of several days to become more of a specialist. Dial your pattern in and just run that type of water. Well, normally on a man-made reservoir like this, uh, the fish in the fall are usually suspended, they're grouped up on bait, and they're usually really relating to the creek channels. Um, a traditional pattern across the country is crank baits in the back end of major creeks on channel swings. Every day I'm on the water, I always try to come away with some type of experience. 
You know, I'm truly a student of this sport. And the key for me is go fishing, have a great time, enjoy myself. But as the day develops, try to feel like when I leave this afternoon, I figured it out. Almost noon before Gary Klein scores, and we will see his full day at later dates and learn from comparing himself and Britt Myers. But getting back to Britt and looking at his GPS track, we find that he spent most of his time, both shallow and deep, in a creek arm. By 11.30, he's made 450 casts. This is a good area. It's got shoreline grass, got trees hanging over the water. Got about a 10 mile per hour wind, um, which in the fall that should be good. Any time of year you got wind is going to be good. It doesn't seem to, the weather conditions have been kind of stable. It's a little cooler this week than it was last week, but that's typical fall fishing. Here she is. Oh my gosh, another good one. Come on, girl. That clear water. She's barely hooked. All right, bring her on in. Thought she's bigger than that, but hey. Wind, they say the wind's your friend. Had a little bit of wind, she ate the spinnerbait. That's the kind of bite you like right there, and you come through the grass and just we go swirling at the bait. Now that was in the grass. We've had several come up and swipe it and hit it and miss it. And that's another good one though. Nice fish. Well, let's take a look at Britt Meyer's stats for the first half day, which used up close to 500 casts, produced only three bass. But you have to give it to them. They were three quality bass. Two on a spinnerbait and one on a jig. All three were fairly shallow. When we return, we'll check on Britt's next 500 casts and what results from them. Also, what would you think if I told you that the U.S. Air Force may have cost Britt Myers a Bassmaster Tournament victory? Could that be? We'll show you how to get that story. Look at him. I mean, my career highlight, I guess, is being able to fish the Elite Series. You know, getting to fishing with guys like Gary Klein and, you know, guys you grew up fishing with. And when you get the blast off and the way in, and I mean, I, I know those guys, they probably sleep good. I've been doing it for three years, and I still don't sleep the night before the tournament. You know, I'm all jacked up, ready to go, and it's a real honor to be out there and compete with them. It's a real privilege. Brett Myers is turning into a pretty solid elite pro, and his day on the lake has been pretty solid as well. You know, fall fishing can be a challenge at times, and you throw in clear water and bluebird skies, and a big reservoir like Arkansas's DeGray does not want to give in to you. Uh, the typical fall pattern is all the bait fish normally start to migrate towards the back of the creeks and main lake pockets. This time of year, if you find the bait fish somewhere around there, the largemouth or spotted bass are going to be right there with them. They're running the main lake now. We've got the wind blowing out here. Just trying to switch up a little bit. Just see if we can get something else going other than the, I guess what I'd call a fall pattern, fishing the backs of the creeks. I think if we stuck with it all day, we'd catch fish, but we're just trying different patterns, see if we can catch them any other way. Here's one. Not a giant, but it's a bass. Yeah, this right here is on the main body of water. If you notice, it was smaller too. Smallest thing we caught there. That's about a, I guess, pound and a half fish. Fall is so unpredictable. The fish are roaming with the bait. And we've seen bait out on the main lake and in the back of the creek. So the fish are kind of everywhere. They're just following the bait fish. Wherever the bait fish are at, where the fish are at. If this was a tournament day, I'd stay in the back of the creeks. Just because we've already witnessed two good bites, but, oh my God, but since the days on days we're experimenting, we're trying to figure out different things. We're, we're running main lake, back of the creeks. We're just trying to mix it up, see if we can get something going. Well, it's a 
amazing how fast a full day to fish turns into just a couple of hours left, but that's what's happened here, and Britt, who is on the main lake near the takeoff point, is headed back to the creek that's occupied most of his day. Look at the bait fish. A lot more bait back in this creek, period. We've seen some out there in the main, but nothing like this. There she is. <laughs> oh, look at that one. That's number five. That's about a 12 inch fish. Pull up here and get back of a creek and boom, catch a fish just like that. Same spinnerbait all day long. It's a half inch spinnerbait made by Jim Sue, but I've actually taken some three blades and modified it. Look how small each one of those blades are. They're real small. And if you notice the, um, the bait fish, they're really small. So that's why I elected to throw this bait today. Well, sure it took him all day, but Britt Myers boats a limit of bass and on a lake he'd never been to before. But wait a minute, it's not over yet and he still has an hour left. Maybe one more good fish? I'll tell you something, it's taken until this evening to really notice, but most of my bites, no matter if it's been in a tree or if it's been in the grass, have been on the outside edge. And also, Myers had his best season in 2008, but back in 2007, fishing the Capitol Clash on the Potomac River near Washington, D.C., he was in third place heading into the final day, but unfortunately, his best spot turned out to be right next to the Air Force training facility, and no cameras were allowed in there. That caused him a whole bunch of trouble. You can see the whole story on ESPNOutdoors.com. Let's go. Day on the Lake is brought to you by Progressive Boat Insurance. Visit Progressive.com today. And by Plano Tackle Systems. Plano, America's favorite tackle system. May we remind you that Gary Klein was fishing the gray at the same time Britt Myers was, and we'll see his day later. But you have to say, Britt's day was a winner so far. But as the day went on, it seemed like the better fish would be back in the creeks. And, and the majority of your bait fish was back in the creeks. Um, probably in the last hour, I started realizing that, that, that all my bites were on the outside edge. Got one, big one, swimming a jig. Ugh. I was, I come up and it was real clear and that spinnerbait, those blades kind of, so I threw that flipping swimming jig out there and I just started swimming and she come out here and hit it right beside the boat. Good fish, about three pounds. I'll tell you something, it's taken until this evening to really notice, but most of my bites, no matter if it's been in a tree or if it's been in the grass, have been on the outside edge. I've tried fishing back. I mean, even that one I've caught in the willow tree this morning, was on the edge. I flipped it right on the edge of it. And Britt Myers' day on the lake is in the books. Now here's Britt with his keys to success. Started out uh, this morning fishing in the back of the pockets. You know, it went into a creek and it had it was a creek that had a lot of little pockets and just started fishing and real quick we caught a really good fish, looked to be close to six pounds. That fish was on the outside edge of a grass line and a bush line because, you know, the water being up high. And we just kept fishing, flipping bushes, fishing grass lines, just typical shallow fishing. And, uh, you know, we caught a few. But as the day went on, we started fishing out on the main lake. We fished, and it seemed like the better fish would be back in the creeks. And, and the majority of your bait fish was back in the creeks. Probably in the last hour, I started realizing that, that, that all my bites were on the oh outside God, edge. You know, I was skipping way back Come under on, the willow trees and flipping the bushes and in some really good looking cover, but it's, it seemed to be that all the fish we were catching and all the bites we were getting was on the outside. Even like a grass line five feet outside of it. Oh my gosh, that is a giant. So that if I had to recap the day, and let's say tomorrow I was fishing a tournament, that's what I would do. I would get out there, I would fish out of the grass, I wouldn't throw away up in there, and I wouldn't spend any time offshore, and I definitely wouldn't come out to the main lake. I just don't think the quality fish are there. I think the keys to my success today 
we're just covering a lot of water. Uh, not staying in one area, throw the motor on high, just fishing a lot, you know, trying to figure out what was going on. And, and little by little, we figured it out. This has been a presentation of oh ESPN, gosh, a worldwide giant. leader in sports. That is an absolute giant. Look at this fish. <laughs> for a full profile of Britt Myers' Day on the Lake, log on that to ESPNOutdoors.com right for video, photos, and more. Look at that. <laughs> Woo, that's a pretty fish. <laughs>